hello guys today will be we will be discussing about uh, what is rash uh, redis and uh, why we use it uh, in our application and what is a redis cache and uh, we will take a look at that the spring boot application with the redis cache let's get started Our Redis is basically an open source in memory data store used by the millions of the developer as a database, cache, streaming engine and message broker. Basically, uh, if you are using uh, memory uh, utilization and memory data storage, then definitely uh, Redis is a good choice. So Redis is very fast, very convenient and you know most of the applications uh, are basically uh, using this kind of uh, in memory data uh, manipulation then redis will be the good choice and the so second point is in memory data structure when load uh, is a data structure over the server with the support for the string hashes list sets sorted sets and streams and more so in memory data uh, any type of the data it can be handled and number third is the persistent the one issue which is a uh, very 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 important that uh, if you are saving the data into the uh, caching that the data will be you know persistent or not so persistent is a basically a data should be stored in somewhere as as a permanent storage so that is a persistent so keep as a data set in the memory for the fast access but you can also persist or save all the rights to the permanent storage to survive the reboot and system failure okay number third is the clustering the clustering is very big with the feature the horizontal scalability uh, it's mean the multiple servers horizontal scalability means multiple servers are connected together and we can scale uh, accordingly so horizontal scaling with the hash based sharding uh, scaling to the millions of nodes with the automatic repartitioning when growing the cluster so uh, if uh, if you can uh, think about what is uh, sharding and what is uh, repartitioning and glow cluster and these all points are covered into the next slide but you can think in a way that all the nodes all the machines are connected together and data is stored onto the machine and this data is basically uh, not uh, it is basically a storage can be into the multiple uh, nodes so data will not be uh, uh, your data will not be discarded so it will save on to the multiple on the nodes the high availability basically replication with the automatic failure uh, for both of the standalone and cluster deployment for example if your server is down and your data is stored onto the server so what happened so it's high availability means the data has to be replicated onto the multiple machines so it, your data would not be lost and uh, when whenever the failover is come uh, and uh, you will be safe so this is a cluster high availability and uh, now more about the redis enterprise cluster arch architecture the redis enterprise can be either a single redis server database or a cluster database it's up to you uh, how you can set up your application and this allow you the redis enterprise database to either scale horizontally across the many server through the sharding or a copy data okay which ensure the high availability with the redis enterprise replica and what is the sharding the sharding is a type of the database partitioning that separate the large databases into the smaller faster and more easily managed parts so that is a sharding means you have a big of the database and has uh, you know uh, for accessing and manipulation is a very costly so instead of making the one database uh, you can store the data onto the smaller databases and uh, you 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 have to apply some algorithm where the data is to store and, uh, and this kind of the techniques is called sharding and uh, the, these similar parts are also called shards with the sharding or the partitioning you are not restricted to store the data onto the memory of a single computer 
So as we discuss, uh, the data is you, it should not be stored into the single machine. It should be distributed environment. So another advantage of sharding is being able to use the computational power of the multiple cores. So as you know, the in a in a in, a, in a, this current era, uh, the computers are multi-core computer. For example, 16 core, 18 core. So you can use the power of the core, and you can apply the multiple nodes over the core, and then you can get the bet uh, performance. So uh, in the Redis in enterprise, a cluster is a set of the cloud instances, uh, virtual machines, or container node or bare mental server that you let you create on the number of the Redis databases in in-memory or store pool that shared across all the set, the cluster does not need to scale up and down, okay? The cluster does not need to scale up and down whenever a new database is created or deleted. So it should done scaling automatically, okay? A scaling operation is triggered only when the predefined limit threshold has been reached. So it should be automatic. You don't need to worry about that. And you have to set the limit. If you are adding the more databases, if you are adding the more data, it will scale accordingly. So this is called automatic, uh, you know, scale up and scale down. So such a memory, CPU, network and storage IPOs. So this is our Redis enterprise cluster architecture. And you can take a look at that. Uh, what is the architecture? Uh, will be used so to create a, sh a sharded cluster you need to first specify the number of the shards okay and once you have done this your data will automatically shared or divide into the groups or place for the optimal nodes at a given time the redis enterprise uh, cluster node can include the zero or few hundred of the redis database in one of the following types so these are the types number one is the simple database so in the diagram you can see the simple database is consist of only one database a simple database a primary database with a single primary shard so this is called the single primary shard and high availability ha database means uh, a pair of primary and replica so this is a replica this is a primary so uh, the data will be replicated onto the this primary so this is high availability database for example if primary is down then the data will be available into the replica and if replica is down then definitely the primary is working so this is high availability the number third is the cluster database which containing the multiple primary shards each managing a subset of the data set or redis in the term of the different uh, hash shots so these are basically uh, cluster databases this all together these all primary databases and connected together and this is a basically uh, cluster so this is called the cluster okay the fourth part is high availability cluster database multiple pair of the primary and replica so in the second diagram you can see every uh, database is consistent of its replica so and then you can be able to high availability cluster databases so this is a redis enterprise architecture four types and the number one is point uh, why we use the redis and what is the purpose of redis because the redis is being very popular and uh, you have to use in your application so for example uh, in this diagram we have a uh, application that is deployed on to three different servers and we have a client it client should be a uh, any you know mobile application or web application so uh, normally we do request to the server and then we can get the responses but uh, what about the cache so for example if i use the cache the cache will be stored onto the server so uh, if you have deployed your application onto the multiple uh, servers multiple instances or multiple clusters then where the data uh, cache data will be stored definitely it should be a very good question that uh, because for example your client is connected to the server one and uh, the cache is uh, you know uh, is built on server one then what happened if the connection is uh, connect is this application is connected to the other servers two or three so definitely uh, the cache will not be you know uh, stored onto the server it should be as uh, separate as the server or we can say that we can use the redis uh, the power of the redis and then store the data onto the redis 
so uh, in this diagram you can see the redis is basically uh, is used for the caching of the data it is very fast instead of you know getting the data from the database every time you can use the redis okay so now we have to collect, take a look at that the example uh, example uh, that how we can uh, uh, you know use the redis in spring boot application so this is our application we have a simple application is built on uh, java uh, spring boot and we use the gradle so this source code is available uh, onto the github you can find the link in the description so this application is basically uh, a simple application uh, spring boot application we have a user you can see the user entity so this is a user table okay this is a role table this is a user controller where the all requests are coming okay and then you have uh, some security uh, uh, if you want to use it that's fine otherwise you can skip this and we have uh, some repository user repository and role repository and this is a user service by the way so this application in the in the database you can see uh, for example uh, we have a two user number one and number two and uh, uh, this all database uh, consists of in the database so as you can see this this is the first user uh, for example if I get the user detail so you can see the user detail over there right so for example if I hit multiple time uh, and definitely you can see the 5.36 millisecond uh, for fetching this data this is coming from the database but uh, uh, you you would have to use some you know caching uh, this data first time you can be able to save then this data will be stored into the cache and then instead of you know getting from the database it should come from the gradis database and similarly if i update the data so it should uh, be you know update to the cache instead of you know getting uh, the data from the database so in this example uh, you take a look at that for example this is a user for example if i create the user new user you can uh, create a new user as well for example if i say uh, this is uh, uh, this is the fetch user sorry this is uh, our user okay for example uh, this is my username and this is my email and then password uh, for example if i uh, For example if I update this user so and then save it the data is basically stored and then coming from the cache so you can see in the uh, in the application it is save okay for example if I uh, make the changes 66 six, instead of 6 is 55 five. so this data is basically uh, updated into the database but uh, if I get the f uh, the f if I get the uh, for example if i get the fetch request uh, fetch request okay so this is the port request and this is the fetch. for example if i get the this request so you can see the data is still getting the old values because uh, but the data is coming from the cache okay so data is uh, stored into the cache uh, and then uh, you can see this 666 is basically uh, a data which is you know old data so and it will you know taking the time minimum time so it will you know taking uh, from the memory instead of uh, from the database so you can see the database the values are different right so uh, let me update this for example if i go to this one and then for example six six uh, five six for example if i do the five six and then update it so it is updated into the memory and database so you can see for example in the you can see this is updated into the database and if i get uh, this data uh, then you can see it's coming from the cache so so now the cache once we have saved it the data is stored into the db and the cache as well if i get it uh, uh, from anywhere it is coming from the cache 
However, we have already been updated to the database. So this is how uh, you can do that. And uh, the coding, uh, you can see this is a user controller. Uh, by the way, the, the one setting is required. You should have to be implement some uh, uh, Redis. Uh, uh, the, you can use the Spring Boot Starter uh, Data Redis uh, uh, library. Uh, you need to include it. And uh, you have to do some uh, uh, settings uh, for the your application. So you can do a Spring Boot application name. Okay. So then uh, for the Redis, you can use uh, Cache Spring Boot cache type is equal to redis and redis localhost and then port so this is a default port for the redis so this is our redis configuration so now your application is good to go uh, for the redis and uh, and uh, in the coding so you can see for example if i ask the user so as you can see there is a cache bill the cache bill the, the name of the what is a cache bill the, this is a user and the key is the id so this is an id so once we have uh, asked for the every get uh, so uh, it will you know get the data from uh, the cache first it will store the data first first it will check the data it is available then uh, it will get from the cache otherwise it will uh, not be coming from the cache so this is uh, our one keyword that you can use it and then the data it will be stored in the cache and similarly for the saving operation uh, you can use the cache as well okay so but uh, for example in the put operation you can use the cache put so cache uh, get and cache put cache bill and cache uh, put is basically a method uh, for you know uh, for storing your data so this is a two keyword line and then your data is stored into the cache so it's very simple so you can uh, download this application and play around with this if you have any question and uh, then do let me know thank you very much Bye.